today from NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. It's week nine of the NFL on EA Sports. It's the Houston Texans. Taking on the New York Jets. Got a wonderful fall afternoon in the state of Texas. The roof is open and we've got football from NRG Stadium in Houston. Today it's a week nine matchup. We are all set to go as it'll be the New York Jets taking on the Houston Texans. with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Texan ball club entering play here. The losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jets, they come into this one off a bit of a clunker last time out, a loss that ended their five-game winning streak. Opening play, and Stroud will throw it. That one complete. It's Tank Dell. These are his numbers from last week's contest. And you figure that he'll probably be a big factor in this one as well. No question about it, partner. We just saw right there. They want to get him the ball in space and see what he can do after the catch. Options galore here. Second and a few inches. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. They'll try and run for the first with Edwards. It'll be a gain of six that time as it moves the chains as well. Faced with their first third down conversion opportunity and able to punch it through and pick it up on the ground. And to me, doing it on the ground sends a different type of a message than throwing the football. And, you know, let's face it, we've done a lot of games together. How often have we seen third down turn into an automatic passing down no matter what the yard is? Yeah, and last thing you want, that opening drive to go three and out. You got everything scripted, lined up. Let's get some points on the board. They're able to avoid that three and out. Here's the first carry of the game for Zach Moss. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you could do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, whatever script they put together for this offensive drive, Charles, seems to be working. I'm curious to see if this defense will make any adjustments here. 
Things certainly going according to plan, aren't they? I mean, the way they're advancing the football, it's like they're on the practice field having one of their better days. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. Now, look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched it more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. Stroud now on first and ten. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. It looks like a 12-yard loss there on the first down sack. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. This now play number nine on the opening drive, but it's third and long. Stroud looking to throw. A short one here caught by McBride. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 25-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. Stroud's throw taken in by Collins. And down inside the 15 he goes. First and 10, it's Stroud. Another one caught by Collins. And the Texans are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Moss. No signal, and now they say he did not get in. He is stonewalled at the one. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. That almost felt like the defense said he is not getting in. What a play. Not only stopping him at the line, but pushing him back a yard as well. Texans take a 7-0 lead. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it was polished off by the Gus Edwards touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And Gibson decides against bringing it out. So here come the Jets for their initial possession of the game. And they will be led out by a man in his sophomore campaign as the quarterback. Now, the meeting we had with him this week, that's one of the briefer ones we've ever had, isn't it? <laughs> he wasn't too happy after last week. Not happy. Really determined to play a whole lot better, and he really can't play a whole lot worse. He's got to go out and show the team that the goods that he exhibited early are still there. Otherwise, he could lose the confidence that they have in him. And hoping to get rid of that interception bug. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. In motion right, that's Wilson. And he'll get an opportunity with it on the touch pass. 
Here's third and a few inches. A give left side, Bush. And he'll have a Jets first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. The Jets at 7-1 now on the year. And they come in following a loss last week. And that, of course, ended that strong run they were on. They had won seven in a row prior. And something you pointed out to me before the game even began, they've had terrific fortune throughout their entire win streak. But we both saw it happen right in front of our eyes. Some of that good fortune dried up, and they ended up taking the loss. First down, they stick with Bush. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync. And the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. From the 47, it's second and five. Looking to throw, Clark. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. This hauled in by Conklin. And he is going to have a Jets first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice sustained series to begin the game, and it will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. Come on, come on. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 46. Back to throw. Clark. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. First down now, here's second down. They run up the middle with Bush, and they'll get this just to the 47, one yard gain. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Looking to throw, Clark got the connection here to Bourne. And he gets this only to the 41, not near enough for the first. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. On fourth down, here's the veteran Thomas Morstead to punt for the Jets. And look at this, it's a fake. So here are the Texans to take over. They're trying to get back on track following the loss to Buffalo a week ago. But the good news, they've got the lead right now here in the football first and 10. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Second down and eight. Again, it's Edwards. And he's going to get this down close to a first at about the Jets' 44. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. Out of the gun, they give to Edwards. He's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. On 
fourth down. Here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. They punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. Back on the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. Just the one misstep for them in the first half of the season. 7-1 is the record at the midway point. And in terms of whatever power rankings you want to go by, they're at or near the top of the list in terms of best teams in the National Football League. And for me and my little bit of rankings here, I've got them at the top. I know there's still two months to go. And we've seen teams get off the hot starts and then fade away due to injuries or the schedule or whatever. But unless there are a rash of injuries on this team, I'd be surprised if they aren't a first or a second seed come playoff time. Oh, a great crab by Wilson. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That goes for a gain of 31. There's no doubt in my mind that not many guys in this league have had the impact that he's had here in the first half of the season. He's been a big play guy from the word go and continues to be one with another one right there. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Back to throw. Clark going right back to Wilson. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll be second down. Looking to throw. Clark. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Operating from the gun, Clark. So the completion good for six yards. And that'll make it second down. Back to throw, Clark. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Desmond King picks it, and the Texans are going to have it here at their own nine-yard line. Well, Brandon, as they say in popular culture, this one's going to leave a mark because they can see the end zone, but it'll stay out of reach because of their error. All their offensive teammates have to give the quarterback right now offer a little bit of encouragement because what's done is done. Let's get him next time out. On first down, they'll start out with Moss. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Right back to Moss. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. The Texans on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and 11. Stroud to throw it. And he's going to go down. He backed up into the end zone, and this is going to wind up a safety. The goal here is about getting any kind of positive yardage in this spot because you don't care who, you don't care how. You just want to try and buy a little space and get away from your own end zone. But in this spot, the defense was all over that play and equally motivated to stick them with a safety. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. Fielded at about the 28. And now out come the Jets. 
And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. Right. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. Clark now off play action toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. After the incompletion, here now third and two. Looking to throw. Clark, he's got his man. It's Kendrick Bourne. And he is going to have a Jets first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. play action here on first down and he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete second and ten to throw again Clark and that one incomplete but now a penalty flag coming in late and that might be P.I. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. Back to throw. Clark on the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. Now a second and 10. Off the play fake. Clark, he completes it to Beckham. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 31-yard line. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Looking to throw. Clark. A short throw to Conklin, the tight end. And he is not going to go anywhere. They're going to get to him behind the line, and that is going to get us to the two-minute warning. Time rolls around. Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. Touchdown, Jets. A great effort there with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Jets have taken the lead. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Hey, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead is now two. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a Jet touchdown. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Texans getting set here to take over again on offense. And things have changed since the last time they had it. The safety led to the touchdown. So now they find themselves behind as they begin with a first and 10. Here's Stroud. 
This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Now Stroud. A short one here caught by McBride. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. The toss here completed to Pittman. And that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. Stroud will look to throw once more. That's complete to Dell. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Play action. Here's Stroud. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And Stroud now to throw. He'll drop this underneath the Moss. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. you want anytime they want to throw the football there's pressure on the quarterback they were getting after him and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion so coming on now is the field goal unit they're going to try for three and he'll need all the leg he's got here that's leaking to the right and he missed it by a foot or two it's no good and they'll remain down by two The Jets going to go on offense one last time in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. On the delay, it's Bush, and he'll be brought down. Two yards, good enough for a first. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. So we have reached halftime here in a tight two-point contest. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, all right, Brandon, thank you very much. Hi again, everyone. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the NFL as we are officially into the second half of the season. We'll get started up in Foxborough, a rematch of a great AFC title game from January of 2018. Jacksonville in town to take on New England. And it's the Patriots with the lead in that one. The Pats still in a dogfight, but this would be a good victory for them if they could get it. From there, let's head off and check out a second game. And you can see, currently they trail in that ball game. 
Justin Jefferson. Two touchdown catches on the afternoon. Lastly, let's get up to Buffalo to check on the Bills. And they trail the visiting Colts as that one's gone to the intermission. Two touchdowns there for Jonathan Taylor. Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. And the Jets set to receive this third quarter kickoff, and they have the lead as well as we are underway in the second half. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. So here are the Jets now to take over. They were losers last time out to the 49ers, but right now they're on the right side of the scoreboard as they start out first and 10. Start on the ground with Bush. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. <laughs> Operating from the gun, Clark takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball and puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Here's Clark. Throwing on first down. The quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. Now Clark, back to the air on second down. A short throw to Conklin, the tight end. Five yards, now it's third and five. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Here is third and five. They'll look to throw again. That is caught. And he is going to have a Jets first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 47. They'll try the right side with Bush. Now Will Anderson gets to him for the tackle. Now second and nine. They'll keep it in the hands of Bush. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Clark on third down. Open man is born. And he is going to have a Jets first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Operating from the gun, Clark. And yeah, that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. Throwing again, Clark. He finds his man, complete. That's Bush. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. 
have to throw again. And that one to the right side and incomplete. Now the Jets will call on the field goal unit here. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that will push the lead up to 12-7. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Throwing now is Stroud. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. It got his man complete. A huge play there for Houston. And even 50 yards. I know we love our jobs. And pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Delson in motion. They'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. What a difference a play makes. A huge step forward, and now a small step back as he loses a yard or two. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Operating from the gun, Stroud. A short one here caught by McBride. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring us to a third and four. Stroud out of the gun here. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. He's known for his legs and his fancy footwork, but he's not getting much of a chance to use it here. The defense continued to hold the upper hand by bringing him down on that play. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And that will cut the lead down to just two. So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. So here are the Jets now to take over. They lost last week. Actually, not only did they lose, they were shut out, but they've got the lead here right now.
They'll start on the ground here on first down. That's to about the 28. Second down coming up. Operating from the gun, Clark. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Chase Young in there to get him. And on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. And keep in mind, in addition to the two sacks that he now has, CD, he's also had a couple of quarterback hurries. He's been very disruptive. To put it mildly, and it reminds me of the time I asked an offensive tackle who struggled like this in a game. He said he was telling the coach, hey, what do you want me to do? This guy's just eating me alive. And the coach finally just looked at him and said, applaud. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Bush. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. Stroud to the air on first and 10. Over the middle, he gets it to Collins. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. So it's a quarter that saw these two teams trade field goals here as we've reached the end of three quarters of play. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and a couple. They'll go up the middle here with Moss. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Two yards, good enough for a first. To the right side, this is Edwards. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. It was Chuck Clark coming up to make the tackle. They work now on second and nine. They run once more with Edwards. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. The Texans on third down, three for seven so far in this game. Here caught by McBride, and he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. to throw. Stroud, throw over the middle, is taken in by Dell. And he's top five in the league in terms of receiving yardage because of plays like that. What have you seen from him on film that you like so much? Well, I'll strip away everything else and get to what we call the moment of truth. When the ball's arriving and there's a defender there, he just comes down with the ball. He competes and takes it away. Great hands, great ability to finish the catch. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Continues to be a struggle for this offense and this home crowd. They're growing a little restless here in the second half. And I think they've just got to look at how they're trying to move the football. Yeah, you want to run it, but maybe you spread it out, maybe some swing passes that can take the place of runs and give you a little more space. Third down, trying to get a little bit closer. From here, the field goal would be 55 yards. 
They'll try and run for this with Moss. And yeah, this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. And partner, when you run the ball on third and two, you're telling the whole world you've got nothing but confidence in your offensive line and your runner, and you expect to get it. But they were stuffed on that play, only got one yard. Great job by the defensive front, the linebackers. Everyone got involved to force a fourth down. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This for a fourth quarter lead. And his kick is good. And they take the lead out in front at 13 to 12. So that Charles a season long right there. And you know who's really excited about that? The special teams coordinator, because he's the one who has to tell the head coach in pregame this is where we trust him from. This distance, he can hit it, and he repaid that trust by knocking that one right through. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. They throw right away, and that's complete out on the right side. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Well, this offense hasn't been at their best here. They've made some mistakes. They've been frustrated. They've been largely shut down. But then you look up and say, wait a second. This is a one-score game. So they're still very much in this, and they're on the move here with a first down. Now Clark to throw on first and 10. He finds his target, Beckham. Yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now that's a catch of some significance. It's number 631 of his career, and why that's significant, it ties him with Hall of Famer Raymond Barry. He was one of the most precise route runners at any position during his time in his career. So I think that we're seeing... Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. That was Will Anderson getting home and finishing the play. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every round that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Operating from the gun. Clark, throw left side complete. That's Bush. And he gets this only to the 44-yard line. Not near enough to keep the drive alive. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked out and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. Now Houston's offense taking over again. A little less than four minutes remaining, and the margin for error is small with this slim lead. Operate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. Remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now. Run the clock down. Make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. Their dream scenario, get enough first downs and make them yeet up their timeouts so the game ends when you're kneeling down with the football. On second down, it's Edwards. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. Fourth quarter, two minutes on the clock in a tight one-point game. 
So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. We're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Moss on the give up the middle. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now a second and six. A give for Edwards running right. And this will be a Texans first down as he gets this up past the 30 to the 32. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Running left is Edwards. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. Here's Brian Anger now as he'll punt it away for the second time. We'll call that a 43-yard punt, two on the return. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. So the Jets now down by one, 20 seconds to go. And they need about 35 yards to get in range for a winner as they come up on first down. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Another try, second and 10 now. He's back to throw. Into the hands of Beckham. And he's going to pick up a first down here as that clock continues to run. One final shot. They'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Bush. And he'll be taken down here. And that is how this one is going to come to an end. A fun, close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort, that was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game overall. So for the Texans, the victory means they'll up their mark to 5-3 and three on the year. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Indianapolis Colts. Meanwhile, for the Jets, it's just their second loss so far to go along with their seven wins. And they'll look to get back in the winning column next week as they head to Foxborough to face off against the New England Patriots. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.